Hello, my name is Earl Crittenden, and I'm an attorney with Gray Robinson, which is a law firm in Florida. I live in Orlando, and we have 12 offices statewide. I also serve as the chairman of the Board of Trustees for the One Pulse Foundation. As a third-generation Orlandoan, and as one who was born in the hospital now called Orlando Health, where multiple health care professionals selflessly work to save so many lives that horrible night, words simply cannot express my appreciation to be involved in this important healing project. When the owner of Pulse, Barbara Palma, approached me about the memorial and explained her vision of making it a reality, it never occurred to me to say no. Barbara's conviction, her integrity, and her concern for the victims' families and survivors is indelibly ingrained in the recollection of meeting her and getting to know her heart. Last year, on the horrible morning of June 12, people around the world saw, in real time, the paradigm example of an act of pure hatred. As we reflect here today, still trying to process how and why, we jump to again examining the enigma of the concept of utter hatred. This year happens to be the 50th anniversary of the 1967 Summer of Love event. It's very sad to note that at that gathering, five decades ago, that group was contemplating the same questions, exploring the same recurring themes we are. Where's the love? Where's the humanity? How do we fix the hatred in society? Sadly, it wasn't fixed, and in fact, as we all know, it got worse. The burden to answer that falls on us, right here and right now. Great thinkers from Aristotle in the 4th century to John Locke in the 1670s have strongly argued the proposition that minds are born as blank slates. In 2017, we are yet to locate a gene of innate hatred. Hate is a learned behavior. As we are all global citizens, each and every one of us is tasked with a responsibility to take an active role in teaching all our young blank slates. We must teach them the virtues of love and tolerance. As Barbara Palma says, we are weak when we are divided. We all have to be strong together. We cannot afford to be, neither will we be, weak. The Pulse Memorial has an opportunity to be truly exemplary to stand as, a, as an unparalleled shining beacon of hope, healing, and educational inspiration that we can, in fact, help fast-track Barbara's vision of inspiration and education to curtail bullying, hate, and violence. We will lead by example. Change is possible. But we, the world, all have to do it together. Orlando was the most visited city in the United States. The 68 million people that came to enjoy our community knew a certain Orlando before June 12, 2016. In shorthand, you'd think of fun, sun, citrus, top drawer attractions, hotels and great restaurants, a new headline-making MLS soccer team, and a dazzling brand new performing arts center downtown. Shortly after the tragedy, the world saw the bottom line reality of what we that live here already knew. Orlando is a city of real people with big hearts, a loving, inclusive, and diverse community where people are overwhelmingly judged by their hearts and not a label. The region's inclusiveness is not a result of the Pulse tragedy, but a reflection of what was already largely in place. However, it is no question that hearts were and remain broken. The path to healing is indeed a long one, and the pain we feel is a result of one singular hater a sick, damaged individual who could maybe have been averted from hate at an early blank stage, blank slate stage. As the Pulse tragedy collectively now moves to the phase of working as a foundation to create an iconic, meaningful national memorial to the victims, the survivors, the first responders, and medical providers, we begin a process I will briefly explain. This is a journey that begins with collecting the thoughts and desires of the victims, families, and survivors. It's a solemn process that will also include the important reflections and wishes of the first responders and the surgeons and Orlando Health medical providers who saved so many lives. The community's thoughts and inputs are also of great importance. Once all that data is collected through a survey process being supported by the American Institute of Architects, 
the Foundation's task force and board of trustees will begin the discovery of what the memorial, and eventually its museum and campus, will look like, and in what form it will reflect the Foundation's mission. The task is not easy. That we know. What we also know is that we need your help, each and every one of you. There is room for everyone at this table, and we invite you in. Our website went live at our May 4th press conference, onepulsefoundation.org, all letters, no numbers. We, the, we are the official 501c3 for the memorial, and all net proceeds will go fund the memorial. If you go to our site, you can see a donate button, and you can purchase a Pulse t-shirt to help support the cause. Please use it and encourage others to participate. We are all in this together. Remember, we will not let hate win. Thank you.